Hey, good morning, friends. I trust you've been blessed this morning as we worship the Lord. I hope you're ready to consider what the Holy Spirit wants to help you see today in His Word to better understand and apply to your faith and apply to your life today. The Bible is so amazing. It's like a flashlight to our path. Sometimes it puts light, light on our hearts, our values. Maybe it helps bring us some comfort, some perspective, helps us consider areas we need to maybe surrender to the Lord and maybe ask Him for a little assistance. Well, I hope that'll happen today. This morning, Pastor Chris German is going to be sharing the word. I pray God's blessing on you, Pastor Chris, as you do, and also on each and every one of you, friends, as you ask God to shed some light on your heart, on your life, and the way you live, and the way you represent Jesus in your world every day. Can you hear me? Yes, I'm on. All right. All right. Amen. Amen. I just want to say thank you for entering into worship and thank you for, for partaking with us and just uh, being so faithful to Calvary. Maybe it's your first time. Maybe you've been coming here a long time. I just want to say thank you for being here this morning and I pray that God would richly bless you and encourage you this morning. And so before I get started, let's open in a word of prayer and we'll get, and we'll get rolling. So Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this day. God, we just give you praise that you are faithful. Lord, that you are good. Lord, that you are trustworthy. Lord, that we can put our trust upon you and, and we will not be disappointed, Lord God. Father, we thank you that you are so near us. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that, that you're closer than a brother, Lord God. You're closer than a relative, Lord God. You are the closest person in our life, Lord God, if we have relationship with Jesus. And we pray, Lord God, that we would just realize that potential that we have in Christ, of how close you are to us. Lord, we also lift up our pastor, Pastor Dan and his family, as they travel. Lord, we just pray you a blessing over their, over their time together as a family. I pray for the sabbatical, Lord, that, that it would bless Pastor Dan, that it would give him fresh vision, fresh insight, uh, fresh anointing from the Spirit of God, that he would sense your heart and your direction for Calvary, Assembly of God, and Lord, that he would just yield to you and, and bring us a fresh vision as he comes back. Lord, we just pray your blessings, Lord, over this message, Lord, that you've put into my heart about patience, continuing on the fruit of the Spirit. And Lord, it's in Jesus' name we pray and we give you thanks. And all God's people said, amen. 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 So t this morning, we're continuing our series on the fruit of the Spirit. And, you know, how many of you have been enjoying the series, The Fruit of the Spirit? You know, I see Jim raising his hand back there. Yeah, praise the Lord. And what was so awesome was that on Wednesday night, you know, we got to go through this in uh, our growth group. A couple of you might have been with us for that growth group. Um, we had a celebration last, uh, last Wednesday and got to come together in the picnic area and eat some food together, uh, eat some fruit together. And it was just a blessed time. And so I'm, I'm excited to be here and share this fruit of patience with you. Maybe your translation calls it long-suffering, or the newest translation of the NIV has forbearance. But I have that honor this morning of carrying on this fruit of the Spirit uh, series with the fruit of patience. You know, as, as I was preparing this, as I was preparing this, thoughts came to my mind about how being a parent I have three children, in case you don't know. One of them is one, there's another that's four, and one of them is 15. And as I was preparing this, thoughts came to my mind about how being a parent prepares people with more patience or lets them know that they don't really have too much patience. <laughs> Just speaking from personal experience, I always felt for the most part, and for that matter, I've even been told or complimented with words like, oh, you're so patient. You're such a good listener. Even this past Wednesday, there was a person, a part of our growth group, who complimented me and said, oh, you're just the perfect person for this, this topic of patience. But I can tell you that after having kids, my patience is tried in ways that I could never quite have thought. <laughs> and all the parents here probably say amen, right? I remember being a child and picking on my brother and my dad, I said, if my, in my notes I have, if my dad's watching at some point, he's actually here. So my dad's right there sitting over, dad, would you stand? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. 
Amen. I shared in Living Free, this is on the side, but I shared in Living Free Friday night, the, the, one of the questions from Living Free, we met on Fridays, and one of the questions was, who's one of the most influential persons in your life? And I said, my dad, because he brought me up in the training and instruction of God. And as you can see, it's carrying fruit. And so parents, I just want to encourage you, raise your children in the things of God. Because when they're old, the word tells us they won't turn away from that. That's just a side note, anyways. But I remember being a child and picking on my brother. And I'm sorry, Dad, for all the things that I've done in testing your patience. One instance, I was chasing my brother in the driveway. And, and uh, he fell and tripped, but he landed on my dad's lawnmower. And, and, and if I remember right, he cut his chin, and we actually had to go to the hospital, and he needed stitches. Um, but then, that's not, then it gets worse. You know, okay, so maybe a week or two later, I'm with my brother in the bathroom, just goofing around, and I'm kind of grabbing him by the mouth, grabbing him by the cheeks, and uh, the stitches come out. <laughs> and we have to go back to the hospital. And I can just imagine how mad or upset that my dad was at me, but I really don't remember anything besides him. I could tell he was upset and irritated, but I, I, don't, remember, I don't remember getting yelled at or, or being screamed at. You know, I, I, it was just like, I think back about that. I'm like, wow, dad, thank you. And that's just one instance. You know, there was another time I kicked a hole in my door. Um, yeah, yeah, you know, the, the truth is coming out. <laughs> but, um, you know, patience. You know, something that I saw uh, growing up demonstrated in my home. And it's something that I'm praying that God helps me with in my home. You know, all of us lose it at times, but God is faithful to help us and help us to mature in that area of patience. And so it's not only parents, you know, so I talked a little bit about parents, but, you know, really everyone needs to be patient. You know, parents can relate with it a lot. Um, but everyone needs patience. For whenever we're dealing with people, there is a real need for patience. A pastor in Missouri shared, um, he was at a school, and, he, and, and uh, the principal, he like, went to the, the school to just do a show, and, like talk about his job as a pastor. The, the school welcomed him in, and they said, well, what's your favorite thing about pastoring? He says, the people. What's your least favorite thing about pastoring? The people. <laughs> the patience that it takes at times. Say, that's none of you here, just so you know. Like, like, you're, you're, all, you're just everyone special. Well, the Lord knows. <laughs> so whenever we're dealing with people, there is a need for patience. And hopefully no one's elbowing someone right now saying, hey, you, yeah, you have to grow in that area. Um, you know, I think about the need for patience at work. You know, maybe, maybe you're working with coworkers, and I, I can just hear it. They looked at me like that again. I can't believe they just looked at me with that look. Did they really just say that again after I told them I don't like them saying that? Doesn't he know that he can't sing already? Why does he keep singing in the office? For supervisors who are frustrated with their employees, how many times is he going to show up unprepared, late, ask me for help on how to do this? For employees frustrated with their boss, why don't they understand this is not the best way to do this? There's a better way. They just don't get it. For people around us in the stores, why is everybody in my way? No, did she really just pull out a, full, a book full of coupons while I'm in line behind her? Oh, did the transaction really fail? We've got to ring all the groceries back up. Why are the lines so long? I'm sure we could come up with more scenarios in which patience is a must, or we need to wait and wait patiently. What I think is crucial on this topic of patience is to remember that God isn't asking us to be anything that he is not. You know, and, and all the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, we could look at every one and we could say, hey, God's demonstrated this for us. Whether through Jesus or whether through the Father, whether through the Spirit, He's demonstrated this for us. And it might come as a surprise to you if you don't know the Scriptures and biblical narratives, but really God is a patient God with sinners and believers as well. You know, we're going to look at some passages of Scripture this morning and just highlight the patience of God, how God is patient. Psalm 103, 8 through 10. If you have your Bibles and you'd like to turn there, I'll give you a moment to get there. But we're looking at Psalm chapter 103, verses 8 through 10. It says, The Lord is compassionate 
and he is gracious. Compassionate and gracious, he is slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. It sounds a lot like patience there, where it says in the word that he is slow to anger. God's slow to anger. It sounds like he's being patient. Think of all the times he's been gracious with you, with you and with us. I mean, we're talking about the holiest person there is, the person who has every right to be frustrated, every right to get irritated with us. And yet he's slow to anger, patient, and one in whom is no sin, and yet he sees as sin possibly on a daily basis. Yet he's patient. It's truly amazing when you consider that. A holy God, perfectly holy and set apart, yet willing to bear with us. Are we slow to anger? Are we overflowing with love? You know, this, this message, I'm hoping that it will stir your heart to be asking questions like, am I resembling the characteristics of God? Am I walking these out through the power of the Holy Spirit? Not on our own authority, but on God's authority as he works in and through us to accomplish his mission. Jeremiah chapter 35. Jeremiah 35, 14 and 15 starting in the second part of verse 14. But I've spoken to you again and again, (laughs) yet you've not obeyed me again and again. I sent all my servants, the prophets, to you. They said, each of you must turn from your wicked ways and reform your actions. Don't follow other gods to serve them. Then you'll live in the land I've given to you and your ancestors, but you have not paid attention or listened to me. Notice the key phrases. You, I'm sure you picked up on it again and again. And you might say again and again and again and again. It sounds like a parent, doesn't it? How many times must I tell you to clean up? And if Brianna was listening, she might say, how many times must I tell you to do something? I'm talking about me. <laughs> Consider in chapter 25, 3, so we read from Jeremiah 35, but if you go back 10 chapters, 11 chapters, um, Jeremiah 25, 3 shares a time frame that God had been speaking to him for 23 years. Imagine if God was saying the same thing for 23 years, and even way more than that when you consider the length of Jeremiah's ministry to continue, and his contemporaries and those who went before him, like Isaiah, Moses, Joshua, Samuel, Jonah, who are also speaking similar messages of repentance and coming wrath. And just consider that. You know that the, the northern kingdom of Israel goes into captivity, I think around 720, um, 722 B.C., and then Judah's, you know, 586. Um, but just picture all the time Begin looking at Moses and just him warning the people and then the next warning the people and warning the people and warning the people and the Lord eventually does send the southern kingdom of Judah into captivity by the hand of Babylon. But notice it doesn't happen without being warned again and again and again and again. That's God's patience at work. That's God's patience at work in the Israelites' lives. And what's important to note is that God is so patient, but even the Lord's patience has a limit. Even God's patience has a limit. It's crucially important when we hear a message like this that we respond in faith and do as he leads us. That we don't walk in our way after we've been warned. For we don't want to purposely test his patience again and again, because eventually we will bear the consequences of ignoring God's words to our life. And so if you're here this morning and God's speaking to you about something and he's telling you again and again, don't get involved in this sin, whatever this sin might be, I just encourage you 
respond and say, okay, Lord, I'm not going to make you be patient with me about this sin any longer. I'm repenting. I'm turning away from this sin. And yeah, I might, I might fall short, but God, this isn't my heart. I'm not going to willfully reject you and reject what you're saying. Amen? Amen. Every day he's guiding us and sharing his heart with us if we're listening. And I believe God wants to speak to every one of you here if you listen. And the song that we sang a little bit ago about waiting on God, it's something that God's been speaking to me as well from Isaiah 40, 31, where it says, those that wait on God shall renew their strength. You know, God wants to speak to you, but you need to wait on him. If you don't have a devotional life, you don't have quiet time with God, get that in your schedule. Put the time in with God so he can speak to you and guide you. How many times we ourselves have been reminded by God about certain things again and again. Friends, I encourage you, take heed and listen to what God tells you. Yield to him. Another passage of scripture from the Apostle Paul, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 1 in the New Testament. 1 Timothy chapter 1 verses 15 through 16. Paul says, here's a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And he says this, he says, of whom I am the worst. What a humble man. But for that very reason, I was shown mercy. So in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display his little patience. No, not little patience. Immense patience as an example for those who would believe in him and receive eternal life. Now notice Paul's description there of Christ's patience. You know, it's not some little thing. It's not, okay, well, if you do it once or twice or three times, uh, you know, uh, but then in the fourth time, it says he has immense patience. Immense patience. You now I consider Paul when he was Saul. And he was persecuting and killing Christians and giving his authority to do that and, and support the murdering of Christians and how patient God was watching on. You know, while Paul was opposed to Jesus and Jesus had so much patience with Paul when Paul didn't even realize that he was doing, what he was doing was evil because he tried to oppose Jesus. He didn't know Jesus was real. He didn't know that, that he was the king. But God was patient with him, and, and God drew Paul unto himself. A famous passage of scripture about salvation, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. 2 Peter 3, verse 9. It says, The Lord's not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you. He doesn't want anyone to perish but everyone to come to repentance. You know, so often we desire for the Lord's return, and that's good. We should. Even the book of Revelation says, come, Lord Jesus, come. You know, but the Lord isn't just sitting back idly doing nothing while we're waiting for the second coming or the, or the coming of Jesus. But he's patient with us. He doesn't want anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. His heart is for the lost to be saved. And, you know, I pray that's our heart as well. Ohio for Jesus. That's what we're desiring to see is many people in Ohio and really, for that matter, in the United States of America and the world to be saved in this hour that we live in. We're reminded God's not just sitting back uninvolved without caring for people, but he's a compassionate and gracious God who desires to see as many as possible come to know him in repentance repentance and faith in Christ. Notice if you go back in the text in verse 3 of chapter 3, it talks about scoffers who basically mock the Lord and say, see, everything goes on like it always has. Where is this coming of Jesus? You might know people like this who mock you for even being in a place of worship like this. Or say things behind your back or at work or leave you out and reject you. Verse 3 reveals to us that what they're saying, you know, they're kind of actually mocking God. A mockery of the Lord. Even, even though they mock God, God's patient, hoping that even those will come to repentance. I mean, think of Jesus' words from the cross. 
probably spoken for those who mocked him there. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Luke 23, 34. Let's consider that. The patience of God. Consider Jesus on the cross speaking these words of forgiveness. He was ridiculed, beaten, horrifically, murdered. He patiently endured this suffering without retaliation. And just consider for a moment the patience of the father and son who looked on and endured it. The father watching his son die and be brutally mistreated on a cross by sinners. You just catch the glimpse of the flavor of what's happening there. Jesus came for them and they mock him and beat him and ridicule him. And, and, and he's suffering for them, for us. And, and they're just mocking him because they don't get it. But he endured and he stayed on the cross and he suffered. Yet he was perfect. Can you imagine that? The patience of the Father and Son and Holy Spirit for that matter. Do we look in our lives to pray for those who mock us like Jesus did? Or do we have the mentality, well, I sure hope the Lord deals with them and they get what they deserve. <laughs> and as a matter of fact, I, I feel prophecy being fulfilled and I'm going to give them a what to right now. <laughs> I hope that we pray for them and show the heart of Jesus. Be a patient, forgiving example. You can probably think of a time when you were tempted to lose patience, to lash out. I can think of an instance where I was tempted to lash out of a per at a person. No, it wasn't my immediate family. I know we talked about my family. But it was someone else, not in the church world either. And what, something, they were doing some things that just really bothered me, really bothered me. And I was getting so upset that I literally um, just want, wanted to do some things to them. But I, through the help of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit helping me, was able to keep my cool. And the Lord, what was so awesome about the situation was though a month or so later, the Lord opened a door for me to bless that person when he found himself in need. So he, a month before, he was bothering me and, and really frustrating me, and I was about to get, in, and wanted to get in his face, and, and things probably would not have gone well. My Christian witness could have been greatly frowned upon had I given in and rejected patience in the moment of the person testing me and getting on my nerves. But because of the Lord's help, I was able to not just talk about faith with him, and actually have him ask me questions about Jesus, about, about the Lord, and talk with him about that. But I was able to demonstrate God's love to him multiple times. Like I said, he got in need. I was able to bless him with finance. I was able to bless him with food. I can, I, I can just imagine if I would have given in, I, I don't even know if I would have been in that person's life anymore. What type of kingdom blessings will the Lord grant you to bless others with if you would just simply be patient with the ones around you. It will speak to them and it will speak to you as well and who knows the future kingdom results when we hold our tongue and we're quick to hear what they're saying and we're slow to get angry and those types of things. Hebrews chapter 12, 1 through 3, back to the example of Jesus it says, therefore, since we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, those who've gone before us, let's throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. Let's run with perseverance, the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so you will not grow weary and lose heart. You now patience, it relates to those two key, phrase, two key phrases in these three verses. And you probably caught those two words I'm talking about. Perseverance and endured. There's a mentality of a not quitting spirit but of one who presses on in spite of whatever is going on. You're pressing on in spite of whatever's going on. You know, looking at Jesus' example, you know, he persevered. He endured. 
the cross. Again, he didn't come off the cross. He didn't call down a legion of angels to take him off the cross, to do judgment on those that were, that were crucifying him, that were talking against him, that were mocking him. No, he prayed for them. He was patient on the cross. It's what he exhibited on the cross, his patience. And we had the privilege, like I shared in growth group, um, about going through the fruit of the Spirit. The textbook, or the book that we used was um, Cultivating the Fruit of the Spirit by Christopher J. H. Wright. Cultivating the Fruit of the Spirit. And he says, he makes a couple of statements I want to share with you. He says, patience is the ability to endure for a long time whatever opposition and suffering may come our way and to show perseverance without retaliation or revenge. And that was on page 69. He goes on in the book and he describes patience as forbearance with others. Coming up to the different terminology, you might hear patient, you might hear forbearing, long-suffering. But he says, patience as forbearance with others. It means putting up with things other people do or don't do. And it means that you make the effort to bear with other people, even when they irritate or annoy you or worse. Forbearance is when you choose to forgive people rather than hold a grudge against them. Forbearance is when you learn to be patient with others. This is crucial right here, mainly because you're very well aware of your own shortcomings and weaknesses. It means you remember that other people are probably also having to be forbearing with you. That's on page 79. Chris sums it up well when he says, patience is a tough sort of word. It demands strength, stamina, and it depends on being able to exercise control over reactions to others. None of that is easy. It doesn't come naturally to us. Can you say amen to that? Indeed, we need the help of the Holy Spirit, and therefore it's called the fruit of the Spirit, not the fruit of Chris, or not the fruit of whoever you, whatever your name might be, but it's the fruit of the Spirit, because he wants to work in you as you're keeping in step, as Pastor Ian told us last week, with the Holy Spirit. And if we're not willing to keep in step with the Spirit of God, we're not going to be able to do those things that Paul lists for us to do. As we've seen in Scripture thus far, patience is part of the Lord's nature. It's who he is with people. And just that alone should cause us to think and say, you know what, I really need to be a patient and forbearing person. Why? Because I want to live like Jesus would. It's a healthy and powerful thing to desire to be Christ-like. And patience and long-suffering are of the Lord. And he demonstrated that for us by bearing with his disciples when they had lack of faith, he demonstrated patience and long-suffering on the cross, as we saw in chapter 12 of Hebrews. 1 John 2, 6 reminds us we're to follow in the Lord's footsteps of living life on mission like he did. And as if all this were not enough to steer you onto patience, we're also flat out called or told to walk in patience. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 2 talking to us, you know, be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Did you catch that? When we're patient toward one another, we will need to bear with one another in love. You know, love was another fruit of the Spirit. And that was in that list, love. As our brother Ben led us in. If we're not bearing with one another in love and patience, We'll seek to find revenge. Relationships are broken and hindered. We'll be prideful, the opposite of humble and rough, the opposite of gentle. Simply put, we lose effectiveness of our Christian witness. And we don't want to lose effectiveness of our Christian witness. But if you do happen to blow it at times, which all of us do, I encourage you to say the words, I'm sorry. That's not how Jesus would live. That's not what Jesus would have done. You know, there's been times in my life where I've had to go to different people. I'd have to, I'd have to tell people I'm sorry, you know. 
Um, that's not how the, the Lord would react. And that's a healthy thing to do, to apologize and to ask God for forgiveness and to ask others for forgiveness. Another rich passage of scripture, um, one of my favorite passages actually, Colossians chapter 3, 12 through 14. Colossians 3, 12 through 14. This one's not in the overhead. Um, so if you have your Bibles, turn there. Colossians 3, 12 through 14. But one of my favorite passages is so rich in dealing with other people and, and dealing with connections with other people and, and how to come about um, differences and what do we do when we don't get along? How do we get along? But it says in verses 12 through 14, chapter 3, Colossians, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, that's a fruit of the Spirit, humility, gentleness, another fruit of the Spirit, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, another fruit of the Spirit, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Amen. Isn't that just such a rich passage? I, I just encourage you, if you're struggling in a relationship, whether it be a marriage, whether it be with your son or daughter, um, whether you be a, a student and you're struggling with parents, you're struggling with friends, it's such a rich passage of how to bear with one another and what to put on. We're told to clothe ourselves. As pertaining to the fruit of the Spirit, we're told to clothe ourselves with patience. And like we've seen already, this mentality of forbearing and long-suffering pops out at us. We're told to forgive as God forgave us. Now, that's, that's some awesome forgiving. That's incredible forgiveness. That's a lot of forgiveness and bearing with one another that God's called us to be and to live out. If you're in a rut in some relationship between a fellow believer or someone who's even not a believer, put these verses into practice and I believe you'll see changes occur. Such great insight gets so practical. So great insight. So practical. Now in closing, what I'd like you to do this morning is have some time with God this morning. Another way of saying it, I want you to be patient in the Lord's presence this morning. When we're talking about patience, I want you to be patient with God this morning. Not to be quick to leave this place, but quick to stay and reflect on the word brought forth this morning. There's verses on the last side of the PowerPoint, and I'd like you to personally look up and reflect on those verses and pray them out to God. You know, what that will look like is I want each of you to grab a your phone or a Bible, and those verses that are right there, I want you to look those up when I get off the stage, when I get off this um, podium. And I want you to look those up, and I want you just to have quiet time with the Lord this morning. And I just want you to ask God, God, how am I doing in this area of my life with patience? You know, read the verse out to God. First, read it out to the Lord. Maybe pray over it then. Read it out to the Lord and say, Lord, what do you want to speak to me from this verse? What do you want to share with me in this verse? Most of these verses are the ones we discussed this morning. And so I'm just asking you, reflect this morning. Ask yourself, how am I doing in this area of patience? What is this verse showing me about patience? How can I apply it to my situation? Am I demonstrating God's patience to others? Or would my kids or those that know me know me as an impatient person? Proverbs 14, 29 tells us that um, the person that's patient, you know, that person has great understanding. The one who is quick to get angry she was folly. You know, and our verse of the week um, resembles that, not to be quickly provoked in our spirit. It says that anger goes in the laps of fools. I don't want to be foolish. It says that anger goes in the laps of fools. So I'm encouraging you this morning, spend some time in reflection with the Lord and see how the Lord responds to you and submit to his leading. Maybe sharing things with you, whatever it might be. I encourage you to respond. Of course, if you need prayer, um, I encourage our prayer partners to come forward and be ready to receive people. 
And, um, and I encourage us all just to be in the word of God. And I want to pray with you, and then I will release you to meditate on these passages of scripture. And there'll be no formal uh, closure tonight, or this morning, but you'll be free to leave as soon as you're done reflecting with the Lord and praying with the Lord this morning. I'll be glad to greet you out in the hall as you exit. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this message of patience. And Lord, first of all, I want to say thank you, God, that you are a patient God. Father, thank you, Lord, that you bear with us, Lord Jesus. Father, thank you, Lord, for the example of Jesus on the cross and how when he was on the cross, he bore with us, Lord God. And Father, we just praise your name, God. We just pray that you'd work in us this area of patience, Lord God. That we pray that, Holy Spirit, that you would have your way with us that you would encourage us, that you would empower us to be patient people who bear with one another, even when, when we're upset, even when we're mad, especially, Lord God, in those times. Now we just pray for the power and anointing of your Spirit to lead and guide us this morning as we look up these verses on the PowerPoint. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.